Uh, praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Akach, Wadash, the honors to the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting the good fight of faith and truth, and sincerity and wholeheartedly, Shalom to the Akwath, which is the women believers, Shalom to you. It's a little bit of reading right here, but um, I probably won't even read all of it, but it's basically just giving examples, kind of like how when Abraham was asking the Lord, that if it be, you know, anybody righteous, I think he went from 50 to five people. Will he spare Sodom and Gomorrah? So um, this video is going to be about how you can't save nobody but yourself. Even those who you enlighten about the truth, if they receive it, it's because the Lord wanted them to receive it. You don't save nobody. And that's the mindset that you need to take in. While we continue this journey, you have people that you love, people that you wish that can get it. But the Lord said that the kingdom of heaven is for you. The Lord also said in Matthew 13 to 10 that the mysteries of the kingdom is given to you, but unto them it is not given. So, hey, continue to worry about yourself. But let's continue. So it says the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, son of man, when the land sinneth against me is how you know that Jerusalem is a people. Before it's a place because a land can't sin. People sin. So say, son of men, when the land sin up against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and I will break the staff of the bread thereof, send famine upon it, and I will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness. Say, if Yahweh Bashim Yahweh if I cause a noise on beasts, to pass through the land and they spoil it so that it be desolate that no man may pass through because of the beast. Though these three men were in it as I live, save Yahweh Bashim Shai, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only should be delivered, but the land should be desolate. And as you see, it continue to grow on, go on. Pestilence, sword, you know what I'm saying? So, Oh, matter of fact, let me read 22. Let's jump down to 22. Yet behold, therein should be left a remnant that should be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye all shall see their way and their doings, and you should be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. All they should comfort you when you see their ways and their doings. And you should know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in the say of the Lord. Yahweh Bashim El Bashai. So the remnant is the only one that the Lord going to save. You're going to be able to see them. As the scripture says, you shall see your teachers and you should hear a word behind you saying this is the way. Walk you in it. Isaiah 30 and 20. So, you know, you only can save yourself. And you see how I said your sons and daughters, especially if they ain't under your household, you can't save them. I, you, of course, you pray for your kids. You'll, now, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, can he save your children even if they're not in your household? Yes. The Lord can do anything. It's nothing impossible for him. You could be on the chariot. You thinking that your kids got destroyed. And boom, they there. I think about that. I meditate on that because I'm not around my kids. So, um, yes, he can. But the Lord told, um, and Matthew, as a matter of fact, let me get this real quick. This is what he told the prison guard. Because he asked, what can I do to be saved? So I'm just jumping straight to the point. And they said, believe on the Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, and you should be saved in your house. So that's people that's under you. That's people that's in your household. Jeremiah 3 and 14 said, I should save one of a city, two of a family. That's you, your woman, your household. Because you and your woman, y'all are one. All right. Your children, all of y'all are under the same umbrella, under the man. If you have little children, 
they have a way better chance than a daughter or a son that's 12 years old because in the scriptures they are considered grown. So that means if you tell them the truth but they're rebellious, then nine times out of ten they're not going to be saved. Matter of fact, let me prove this real quick. Another proving of reincarnation. It said, the fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Now, remember, when you go into the scriptures, it said that we have done worse than our fathers. Also, when you go to Isaiah 14 and 21, it said, prepare slaughter for the children, for they do not rise and possess the land. See, if every man is in control, I mean, if every man is going to get judged, for what they do. How can Esau Edom be judged. For what their forefathers did. Because you are your forefathers. You come back. So it says. Let me read it from the top again. The father shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man should be put to death for his own sin. Now. We. Had to go through these captivities. Because of what our forefathers did. But we are our forefathers. So do you understand? The whole nation got judged. The whole nation is under curses. Because of what our forefathers did. Which we are our forefathers. Because it wouldn't make sense. Why we had to go into captivity for what our forefathers did. Because we are our forefathers. You come back through that seed line. As the scripture says. Every three, four generations. Matter of fact, let me see if I can find that real quick, just in case somebody new watching this. I think it's 20 and 4. Nope. 20 and 5. You should not bow down yourself to them, nor serve them, for I am Yahweh, your power, and I am jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Why? Did, what is so significant about the third, fourth generation? Why the Lord couldn't just say, I'm visiting the iniquity of the fathers and, and just leave it at that? Because if I have a son and my son have a son and he have a son, I could come out through that line. I come out through that third or fourth generation, as scripture says. He said he's visiting. That's future. That's why the scripture says that the spirit of the prophets is subjected to the prophets, which means if you was a prophet in your past, you're going to be a prophet in the future. So. Now, let's get back going back to you only can save yourself because that's the mindset that you need to have. You cannot save nobody but yourself, man. What is that? Um, I always quote this. I'm going to read it today. It said, wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And then you had what the Lord told Ezra. Oops. Mm, let me see. Let me see. I think this is good. So it said, but understand thou for yourself and seek out the glory for such as be like you, a person that believe just like you, man or woman. For unto you is paradise open. The tree of life is planted. The time of, to come is prepared. Plentiness is made ready. A city is built and rest is allowed. Yeah, perfect and good wisdom. Wisdom. The root of evil is sealed up from you. Weakness and moth is hid from you and corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. So this is what you need to understand. The Lord, he's only concerned about his elect. He chosen them from the foundation of the world. Ephesians one and four. You cannot save nobody but yourself. So your best bet is to worry about yourself. You got to get right. You know, you can't think you can save somebody, but you ain't right. And. It says sorrows are past and in the end is showed of the treasures of immortality. All right. So this is what the Lord promised us. So. What is that? I think it's Proverbs. It 
It said, but he that sinneth against me wrong of his own soul, all they that hate me love death. All right. So that means that you. Whatever you do, you're going to have to reap it. This is going back into the um, reincarnation aspect and how everybody pay for their own sins. He that hate, well, he that sinneth against me wrong of his own soul, you the one that's going to have to pay for that. The Lord already paid. You going to have to pay. All they that hate me love death. So guess what? If your mom, your dad, your children, your wife, friends, if they don't repent, they hate the Lord. Matter of fact, and you say like, nah, nah, that can't be. Yeah, it is because here's what happens. You tell people about the truth of who God is and who the word going to call Jesus is. They get offended. So that means that they hate the Lord. They hate his ways. They hate his ways of doing things. But then when you tell them about another God like Jesus or oh, they love him because Jesus is the total contrary, total opposite of Yahweh Shai. I could still be a nigga and be in the truth. So they love Jesus. They don't like Yahweh Shai. So they love death because that's the only thing that's coming to them. So this is why the scripture says. Now I'm going to get that after this one. It said, but he that doeth wrong shall receive the wrong which he have done, and there is no respect of persons. So when it comes to judgment, the Lord don't be like, ah, this is one of my favorite sons. If you mess up, you're going to get judged. Now, King David, he deserved death. He got received mercy. But is you King David? I think not. So don't look at you like, well, King David committed adultery. Do you, if you read the story, King David went through hell. His life was being in danger every chance it get. All right. So, yeah, that's the punishment that King David had to go through. The Lord preserved his life, but he humbled himself. He repented. See, you already know the truth. You don't got that leeway to be like, well, yeah, just saying if somebody wicked out there who think the Lord is a pushover. Well, yeah, King David did this, did that. Paul did this and did that. So that means I could do this and then repent. No, nah, it don't work that way. The Lord will fuck you up. Don't play. Sorry for the language, but hey, this ain't no this ain't no game, man. All you people out there who scoffers and think that you want to watch the Hebrew Israelites for some form of entertainment. OK, continue to keep doing it. But let's get back to the point. You only can save yourself. So don't allow nobody to get in front of that. Don't allow nobody to take you away from the salvation that the Lord have promised us. We have been called. We're trying to be chosen in the way that you can be chosen. Now, number one, the Lord already chose you from the foundation of the earth. You don't know if you chosen or not, but you have a great chance because you have to look at it from this aspect. The, the the elect is going to walk a certain way. They're going to carry themselves a certain way. They're going to say things a certain way. They're going to do things a certain way. All right. They ain't going to be, you know, um, lukewarm. They're not going to be one foot in the world. You know what I'm saying? One foot in the truth. They're going to be serious about this. So if you are one of those people, consider yourself blessed and continue to stay prayed up and, and humble yourself. Scriptures talks about examining yourself. So I'm going to end it on this uh, because don't allow nobody to take away your crown, man. Give not your son, wife, your brother, friend power over you while you live and give not your goods to another. Lest it repent you and you entreat for the same again. So the second part of the scripture is talking about don't allow nobody to guilt trip you and give me giving them something when you know you don't have it. If you don't have it, you don't have it, man. All right. So don't allow no because oh you see, like don't allow your kids nobody your wife don't give nobody power over you all right and 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 another thing too while we in this walk people is, is constantly trying to take your power away they're trying to take your attention off the Lord and bring it on them don't allow that to happen 
So you only can save yourself. You can't you can't save nobody. All you can do is enlighten them. And then the Lord, as the scripture says, he giveth the increase. So all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Hopefully this video is edifying and shalom.